Hello, this video is about the stable roommates problem and how to solve by using Irving's algorithm. The stable roommates problem is just as its name suggests, a problem of pairing. This video is all about pairing. Imagine a group of boarding school students looking to share two men rooms. Interests conflict as some may prefer the same people and others dislike each other. You may ask, what's the deal then? After all, life is not fair. Well, in 1985 Irving invented an algorithm which finds a stable matching, if there is one. A stable matching is when there are no instances such that two unpaired people prefer being with each other than their assigned partners. For example, like this. Steve and Jay are assigned together, Dan and Phil are also assigned together, however, Jay and Dan prefer each other. This is not good, it is unstable. Irving's algorithm pairs elements of the same set. This differs from the Gale Shapley algorithm which forms pairs across two sets. To illustrate, we use a Hunger Games example. For those who haven't watched the movie, the Hunger Games is a violent sport where each state sends people to an arena for a death match. Don't worry, it's not real. Or is it? Ahem, <clears throat> sorry. Fearing death, players tend to team up to eliminate the weaker ones first. To make the problem relevant, let's conveniently redefine it slightly. Say, the game maker announces that any alliance bigger than two will be punished with death immediately, and that each state now only sends one player. What would you be thinking if you were taking part? You would have in your mind a firm rank of who you would want to team up with. You are unique, just like everyone else. As such, there would be dissimilar preferences among the contestants. Now I'll have my slave, uh, assistant, take over to go through an example in detail. Hi. Assuming that we've gathered preference rankings from each participant, we can write this table with the names on the left in green, and their corresponding preference ranking on the right in blue in decreasing order. For example, B will be the most preferred partner of A, and E on the other hand will be the least preferred partner of A. Before I start, I would like to clarify that we don't have enough time for proofs on why things work. If you want to know more, you can refer to Irving's paper, which will be referenced at the end of this video and in the video description. So, the first stage of Irving's algorithm says that every participant taking part in this pairing process proposes to their most preferred partner who has yet rejected them. Then the recipients of this proposal will say yes or no, based on whether they have also received proposals from other more preferred partners. This process has to repeat until everybody has made a successful proposal. Starting from A, B is the most preferred partner who has not rejected A. It's obvious that nobody has been rejected in the beginning. So A proposes to B and B accepts because B has not received anything. For notations, let's use a square for a proposal made to somebody and a circle for an accepted proposal from somebody. Moving on, B proposes to D and gets accepted immediately. C also proposes to D and now D's got to choose. By referring to D's preference ranking, we can see that C is more preferred than B, therefore D rejects B and accepts C. At the same time, B has to cross out D as well since he will never propose to D again. When two people reject each other, we say it's symmetrical. Now B has to try asking his next best choice, which is E and E accepts. Now we've sorted A, B and C, let's go to D. D proposes to F and gets accepted as F has no other proposal. Following that, E proposes to F as well. However, the ranking says E is less desirable than D, therefore E gets rejected and has to try at his next best choice, which is C. C says yes since nobody else has asked. Finally, F proposes to A and gets accepted immediately for no competition. Stage 1 has finished, as everybody holds a successful proposal. In every row, you can also find a square and a circle that are not crossed out. Now stage 2. Everyone simply rejects choices that are less desirable than their current accepted choice. It is as simple as crossing out letters on the right hand side of the circle in each row. Also, it has to be done symmetrically. In the final stage, we need to eliminate preference cycles. It's hard to convey in words how this is done, so let's go straight into it. Here is the table after removing the crossed letters. To find a preference cycle, we start by looking for a participant who has more than one choice. A is the first one with more than one choice, so let's write down A and draw a line below it. For everything above the line, we look for the second best choice and put it directly below. As you can see, A goes to F, so we write F below A. Now for everything below this line, we look for their least preferable partner and put them diagonally over the line. By following the rules, F goes to D, so we write D beside A. D then goes to C for its second best choice. C goes to E for its last choice. 
E then goes to B for its second choice, and B goes to A for its last choice. Now A has been repeated, and this means we have a preference cycle. What we do now is we cancel out symmetrically the diagonal pairs. This process repeats until there's no more preference cycles. Therefore, we need to check for more. Since A has only one choice now, we check B. B has choices E and F, so we do the same thing. We write down B, draw a line below it. Then we find that F is second choice of B, and B is last choice of F. It's not D, because D has already been eliminated in the previous round. Now B has repeated, so we cross out B and F. Look at the table now. It shows that we are finally done, because everyone has been paired up. This table shows our stable matching solution. It is stable because if you pick any combination of two pairs, say AF and BE, None of the participants would want to exchange partners since they will be happier with their current allocation. For instance, A prefers B over F, but B will not trade E for A since B prefers E over A. Now we've roughly seen how the algorithm works. Let's take a look at an example where the algorithm tells you no stable matching exists. Imagine the teacher gives the homework to be done in pairs, and there are four students A, B, C, and M. Having worked with M before, nobody likes his attitude, and they call him the maniac. Again, we have a table like this. We can see that M is least preferable for everyone else. Let's apply the algorithm to the table and see what happens. M has been rejected by every other student, and the algorithm is unable to proceed. This means a stable matching does not exist. If, for instance, we forced M to pair with, say, A, and B pairs with C, and stability will be introduced as A prefers C over M at the same time C prefers A over B. This means A and C will ditch their assigned partners and work together instead. These students will keep on changing partners and will not settle happily. Having seen how the algorithm works, let's analyze Irving's algorithm. Here's the pseudocode. You may pause the video if you would like to read up on this. As you can see from the pseudocode, the worst cases are ON squared for the first loop, because it is possible to exhaust everybody's preference ranking before it ends, ON for the second rejection loop, as you would have to check each person once and the complexity of checking and rejecting is only constant, and ON squared for the final loop. It is possible that nobody was eliminated in stage 1 and stage 2, leaving a complete table for the last loop to eliminate. In that case, it's obvious it would take N squared time. The asymptotic time complexity would be ON squared. The best case is quite intuitive. Think of a scenario that requires least work. It will be when everyone's favorite also put them down as their favorite. In the best case, the algorithm runtime is linear. There are two possible worst cases. One, when people have maximally conflicting preference rankings. And two, when everybody happens to accept their last choice in stage 1. The former causes n squared runtime in the first loop, proposing an order of n squared times. The latter causes n squared runtime in the last loop, in finding and eliminating cycles which goes over an order of n squared preferences. This concludes our video and thanks for watching.